In this example, we've been asked to use the trapezoidal rule with four intervals to approximate the integral of 2 to the x with respect to x, where x goes from 0 to 4. We've also been asked to approximate the integral using the Simpson's rule. So this is with the same four intervals, using the Simpson's rule, two on the same integral, and compare each of the approximations we get to the exact value of this integral. So we need to do this integral precisely with an exact method, substituting the limits to get the answer for this. So we'll start part A with the trapezoidal rule. I remember for the trapezoidal rule, once I have my number of intervals, I work out the spacing. I use that spacing to get my x values substitute them into the function to get the y values and the trapezoidal rule is an addition of those y values in a specific way to approximate the integral. So let's write down what we know. In part A of this question, the function that we're trying to integrate is 2 to the x. So let's write f of x is equal to 2 to the x. The number of subintervals we want or number of intervals is 4. We know straight away that should give us 5 x values, so therefore 5 y values. The other things we know are the limits here. The first limit, a, equals 0, and the top limit, b, is equal to 4. So we write those down. a is equal to 0, b is equal to 4. With those values, I use my little formula for the step size or the width of each interval, h, which will equal b minus a over n which in this case is 4 minus 0 over 4. So the step size or the width of each interval is 1. So I'm going to start at 0, step out 1, 2, 3, 4, until I get to the final value 4. When I have my h values, we'll write down the x values, substitute into the function to get the y values. They are used in the trapezoidal rule. So when I have the h, we'll start with the x values. My first value we'll call x0. It's also always equal to the first limit, which is a. There it is there, 0. I add h to these x values until I end up at the last value, b. So my next value, x1, will equal 1. x2, I'm just adding h to that each side. x3 is equal to 3. And x4 is equal to 4. I end up at the top limit, 4, so that's where I stop. Just check. 4 intervals means I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x values, which is right. For the trapezoidal rule, I need the y values. So substituting these into the function will get me my y values. So just putting these in, y of naught, which is equal to x is naught, 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. y1 our x value is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, and continuing on, y2, x is 2, so 2 to the 2 is 4, y3 is 2 cubed, which is 8, y4, which is 2 to the power of 4, is 16. These are the y values that appear in my trapezoidal rule. So using the trapezoidal rule, we can write it out. We know we have four intervals, which is five points. I is approximately equal to. The trapezoidal rule is h divided by 2 outside of y naught. It's 1 times the first one. 2 times all of those in the middle. So 2 times y1 plus 2 times y2 plus 2 times y3 and 1 times the last y value, which is y4. Substituting all the values we have in there will allow us to evaluate an approximation to the integral. h was equal to 1, so we have a 1 half out the front. Substituting the values in, here's all the y values. Substituting them into there, 1 times the first and the last one, 2 times those in the middle. So we will get 1 plus, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, and 16 times 1 is 16 on the end. Adding these together, I get 16, 16 is 32, and 8 is 40. 45 divided by 2. This is equal to 45 divided by 2, 
which is equal to 22.5 or 22.5. So my approximation using the trapezoidal rule gives me 22.5. That's the end of part A. Moving on to part B of this question, I need to approximate the same integral with the same number of intervals using Simpson's rule. So, I already have n, a and b, from that I have h, I already have the x values, I already have the y values. The only difference with this is I use a slightly different rearrangement of the rules of the y values here for Simpson's rule. So using all the information from the first part, Part B will just be using the Simpson's rule. So let's write that down here with n is equal to 4. The integral is approximated by the rule is now h divided by 3. Again, it's 1 times the first value. And the next values alternate. The coefficients are 4, 2, 4, 2. So it's 4 times the next value. 2 times the value after that, 4 times the value after that, and then the last value is again 1 times. So just check the Simpson's rule. We have the same h is divided by 3 now, and the coefficients of the y values, 1 times the first, 1 times the last, and then they alternate 4, 2, 4. If we had more values in here, they would continue on, 4, 2, 4, 2. But there are our values. We've got n is 4, so we've got 5 values to deal with. Substituting all the values from the previous question, the previous part, into our values, h is equal to 1. We have 1 third outside of y naught was 1 plus, remembering what they are, 4 times 2 is equal to 8 plus 2 times 4 is also 8, plus 4 times y3, which is 8, 4 eighths are 32, plus the last term, which is 16 on the end there. Adding all these together, 16 and 32 is 48, 56, 64, 65, our answer is 65 divided by 3. 65, I can't simplify that any. But if I put that into a calculator and just write out the first few decimal places, 65 divided by 3 gives me 21.6 recurring. 21.6666666 on forever. So we compare that to... The value we got from the trapezoidal rule, 22.5, compared to the Simpson's rule with 21.6, using exactly the same points. So they're slightly different, but we need to work out which one is closer. So we need to do part C of this question, which is to compare A and B to the exact value. The exact value of this integral, 2 to the x. So let's see how to do that. Part C of this question will just be integrating from 0 to 4 the function 2 to the x with respect to x. We haven't done a lot of these functions. We've done x's raised to powers, but not a lot when x is up to the power, except for when we have e to the x. So what I really want to do is rearrange this function inside to give me e to the power of something. The only way we can do that is using our rules for exponentials and logs. Remember that e to the power of the natural log of x, so this is e to the power of log to base e, they cancel out and give us x. So that's one way we can do that. We're going to write this 2 to the power of x now as e to the power of natural log of 2 to the x. Let's think about that again. So e to the power of a natural log cancels out and all you're left with is what's inside the log, which is 2 to the x. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. But now up here in the power, I've got x up there as a power, so I can rearrange that. The x, which is a power, can come out the front of the log. 
still in the power of the exponential, but that x inside the power can come out the front of the log. So that gives me x log 2. Now the log of 2 is just a constant. So this function that I've got now is e to the power of a constant times x, just like e to the power of ax. And I can integrate an exponential with an ax up there. So let's substitute that in and see how we do that. We've still got the integral from 0 to 4. Instead of 2 to the x, I'm replacing it with e to the x log 2. e to the x log 2. And I'm integrating all of that with respect to x. And I can integrate this. This is just like the integral of e to the ax. The integral of e to the ax is e to the ax, but then I multiply by 1 over a, whatever the constant is out the front. So the derivative of that, just we'll write that rule over here. The integral of e to the ax dx, you should have seen before, is 1 over a times e to the ax plus an arbitrary constant. In this case, we've got a definite integral, so we won't have the arbitrary constant. But in our case here, we've got that e to the ax where we're replacing a with log 2. So we're going to have 1 over log 2 out the front, there it is there, multiplied by e to the power of x log 2. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 4. Before we go through and start substituting in the limits, we can do our simplification here in reverse. So I've still got this constant out the front, 1 over log 2. e to the x log 2, I can rewrite in backwards as just 2 to the x. So before substituting in the limits, I can rewrite this 1 over log 2. Think about putting the x back into the log as a power, so 2 to the x. The exponential and the log cancel out, and all I've left with is 2 to the x. And I'm evaluating that from 0 to 4. So now to evaluate that at these points, substitute in the top limit for x minus the bottom limit for x. So I can rewrite this having equals, leave the 1 on log 2 out the front. This will give me 2 to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 0. The top limit minus the bottom limit. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 16 minus 1 is 15. My exact answer for this integral is 15 over log 2. I don't know what that is. I want to write it out as a decimal to compare it to my Simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule. So if I put that 15 over log 2 into a calculator, I get 21.640. Etc. That's rounded to four decimal places. So the exact answer, 21.6404, we compare that to the trapezoidal rule, 22.5, and the Simpsons rule, 21.6. You can see it's much closer to the Simpsons rule. So the Simpsons rule, in general, will give a better approximation than the trapezoidal rule. Again, just checking our exact answer, 21.6404. The Simpsons rule is more accurate than the trapezoidal rule.